So as I mentioned before, I finished the course at the Breathe Institute and I wanted to share a couple of things that I learned. One of the things I think is critical is going to be how to tell if your child is developing craniofacial abnormalities, which can lead to sleep apnea and UARS and uh, postural issues, chronic headaches, nasal congestion, TMD, which then leads to other things such as anxiety and depression, gastrointestinal issues. So this is really important and actually some of it, some of it I think is going to surprise you. So here we have an image of two boys. I think if I remember correctly, they're twins. And uh, one of them was a patient at the Breathe Institute. And so these two boys, you'll see the boy on the left has craniofacial abnormalities and the boy on the right doesn't. So at this point you might be asking, why would a child like me when I was a child develop craniofacial abnormalities? I'm gonna explain that in another video, so stay tuned for that. The Breathe Institute is referencing a particular paper for this information, so I'm gonna link that in the description. So the first thing that you wanna look out for to see if your child is developing craniofacial abnormalities is spaced dentition. So a healthy child is gonna be growing their teeth out with small spaces between their teeth. So if you have no space between the teeth as a child or worse, dental crowding already, that's a sign of craniofacial abnormalities. The second is open mouth posture. Children, while at rest, should naturally have their lips closed. If they're having their mouth hang even a little bit open, this is a sign of craniofacial abnormalities, and especially if they're breathing through their mouth while they're sleeping. This is something that you want to address by seeing a doctor. Unfortunately, I can't recommend most doctors. This is relatively new information, at least it's not widely understood yet by primary care physicians and pediatrics. So I would recommend starting a journey and trying to find the right person. One resource I'm gonna mention in the future, and I haven't read this book, but it was brought up during the course at the Breathe Institute, is this book called Sleep Wrecked Kids by Sharon Moore. I haven't read it, but it's on my reading list, so it might be a good starting place. I'll surely make a video as I read that book. The next is malocclusion, otherwise known as crooked teeth and dental crowding. So here you'll see normal bite, but if you have an overbite, an underbite, an open bite, or any dental crowding, this is a sign of craniofacial abnormalities. You heard that right. The need for braces is natural and means you have craniofacial abnormalities. Interesting fact, if one were to look at ancient skulls of uh, civilizations long ago, or even the skulls of animals in the wild, you're not going to find much, if any, cases of malocclusion. It's a very modern disorder, so stick around to see why that happens. This one was interesting. This is the facial index, so what this is referring to is that children with craniofacial abnormalities will grow to have longer faces. Their jaws will point down like mine does. Um, so you can do these measurements, I guess, measure from the uh, middle of the eye to the chin, um, and then from the lobe of ear to ear or something along that line, and you get the ratio of V over H. And if it is above 0 0.9, then that is a sign of craniofacial abnormalities. This next one is super interesting and something I had no idea about. This is scleral show. This little white space below the eye is called the sclera. And in a healthy person's relaxed neutral gaze, you should not be able to see much, if any, white under the pupil. If you do see white under the pupil, this is called scleral show and is a sign of craniofacial abnormalities, which was so crazy. It's crazy to me. You can just look at someone's eyes and tell if they have, you know, or at least are prone to sleep apnea. And it's also crazy how complicated this is and how a few modern factors can change the body in s such strange ways. The next thing which was really eye-opening for me is the flattening of the malar region. This is talking about your cheekbones. From the eye to the bone should have some angle, but children with craniofacial abnormalities, that angle will start to flatten. I think this is best demonstrated by simply looking at this diagram. 
One of the things that you'll notice, which is fascinating, is this bump on the nose that develops. I have the bump on the nose. Honestly, I thought it was because of my Jewish heritage and I was proud of it. Now I realize that it's not my heritage and actually a deformity. So not as exciting, but really interesting. The next thing to look out for is under the eye grooves. I don't know why this happened, a little bit of bag under the eyes, but I didn't know this and I don't know to what extent it's normal. I want to point out now, maybe I should have pointed it out earlier, you might not be able to pick out any one of these things and claim that someone has craniofacial abnormalities, although you might be able to, but I think that you need to look at things comprehensively and look at all these factors together. So moving on, then we have external canthus of the eye lower than the internal canthus. So basically what that means is the eyes should be more or less straight and if you have these craniofacial abnormalities, the eyes will slant downward a little bit. Another thing which I talked about in a previous video uh, link to that if you want to learn why this happens is this kind of forward head posture and it's not just forward head posture it's rounded shoulders and it's not just those it's also anterior pelvic tilt the last thing to look out for is how much strain is required to keep the mouth shut your teeth should be such that you can close your mouth without any effort but if you have some sort of mismatch in your jaw and your bite you might have to stretch your lips over your teeth to be able to close your mouth and you'll be able to see uh, such as in these photos what's called here dimpling and that's what they refer to as mentalis muscle strain or muscle contraction so that's everything i mean when i went through this portion it was just wow i promise as you're going to be going through your day-to-day -day life less so during the quarantine, but you're going to be seeing people and things are going to start to make sense. You're going to be noticing this everywhere. You're going to see bad posture. You look up at your face, you're going to see these things. Might not be every time, but to me, I mean, I knew a few of these things, but when I really learned all of these, I feel like I was looking at people who I could really tell, like me, that had these craniofacial abnormalities, there was no question about it. You know, what I used to think was just, oh, everybody's different, everybody has different genes. Now I'm seeing this widespread disorder everywhere. So that's really interesting, I think really important, honestly, for everybody, everybody to know, or at least every parent to know. So thanks for watching, and again, we're gonna go over some more information in uh, later videos, and, and I had gone over some in previous videos, so check those out. Goodbye. Ha <laughs>